Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me on this program. This is Destiny International Christian Assembly, and I'm Pastor Jide with the Alternative, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom, directly into the comfort of your home. I appreciate you connecting with us online on a regular basis. We appreciate your love, and I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and bring peace in your homes in the name of Jesus. Um, on this episode of our program, I'm speaking about the light, Jesus, the light of the world. I've spoken about Jesus being the only Savior, Jesus being the bread of life, Jesus being our, uh, uh, the door, the only way to heaven, the only way to the Father. But in this episode, in this segment, I want us to look at Jesus as the light of the world. In John's Gospel, chapter 8, and in verse 12, Jesus was speaking to his disciples and to the people around him, and um, he made this statement, and the statement was, uh, he said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. And he said, because you will have the light that leads to life. These are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ during the Feast of the Tabernacle. Now, if you know anything about the Bible and the Old Testament, the Feast of the Tabernacle was when God commanded the children of Israel to celebrate this feast so they can remember what he has done for them in the wilderness when they were crossing from Egypt to the Promised Land. They were living in tents, and uh, so they had to have some sort of light because there was no electricity in those days, obviously. They have to have some sort of light. And God became their light. He put a pillar of fire or pillar of cloud. And God says you should do this every year to, re to celebrate this victory uh, that I brought to you and protection that I brought to you and so that your generations after you will remember and appreciate what God has done for you as a nation. In this feast, Jesus was there, obviously, and um, he went into a place called Treasury. And while everybody was gathered there, we were told that at the entrance of the city, there were two massive lights that was, that was placed there so it can lighten the entire area, the environment, perhaps the whole city, so that people can understand and see and remember that God was their light. In the middle of all this, while people were jubilating and celebrating, Jesus made a statement. Obviously, they gave him the audience, and he said to them, I am the light of the world. In another word, the light you witness in, in Egypt, I mean, when you left Egypt, uh, is a symbol, it's a sign of what is to come. That was a, a way of God showing you that I will be in your midst. I will provide life for you. I will provide protection for you. But God has now come, Emmanuel, God has now come in their midst now. And Jesus was telling them, I am that light. If you follow me, now the second part of that said, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. It is nice and great to have this massive light around you, but it's temporary. In another word, Jesus is saying, after some time, the oil will dry off and it will go away. It brightens your city, it brightens everywhere, but if you follow me, I am the only one that will brighten your life and give you life which is much more than what the light you have lit in there and celebrating can, gi can give to you. This was dramatically spoken in the right time when everybody congregated and they were listening to what Jesus was saying. Now, it's important for us to understand what light is all about. What is light? Light is illumination and it produces from a sort of energy. Light always has its source. It does not produce itself, but has a source. In our planet, it is the sun that shines and gives us light during the day. Obviously, in the night, the sun goes away, and then we are in darkness, and then we need a natural light, I mean, um, artificial light to survive. So, in our planet, sun is what produces light during the daytime. Light represents life. Light represents life. It, this is why we read in the Bible that when Jesus came to them, he said, anyone that follow me, I will give him life. Jesus gives us life in abundance. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone that come to, wants to come to the Father must come by me. So life in this context represents life. Number two, life also represents goodness. Before God says everything that he was made was good, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, he says, and God said, let there be light. Light is what brought goodness on the planet Earth. Before light came, the entire universe was, according to the scripture, was in darkness. Number three, light also represents knowledge. When we talk about knowledge, we're talking about knowledge of good and evil. Without light, you can't understand between the good, the things God wants or the things that God does not want. You cannot live right. You cannot understand things concerning, concerning God. So light represents, number one, life. It represents goodness. And number three, it represents the knowledge of good and evil. Knowledge is the ability to distinguish between things. It helps us to create distinction. So when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, I want you to understand the idea here implies that everything good comes from him. He is the source of all light. He is the source of light. As a matter of fact, in John chapter 1, verse 9, John the Baptist says that this Jesus is the true light that lightens every man that comes to the whole world. So we understand that Jesus is the light of the world. He's the true source of light. He's the true source of knowledge. And we cannot deny that. What then is darkness? If we understand that light is life, light is knowledge, and light is goodness, what is darkness? Darkness, um, as I'm going to explain it, is the absence of light. Darkness is the absence of light. Darkness has no source, but light has source. Darkness is when light has departed, then darkness remains. When light comes in, light, darkness departs. So darkness has no source. Darkness manifests only when light is present. Light comes, darkness disappears. Darkness in the Bible refers to, number one, evil. Number two, sinfulness. It is used to refer to death and disobedience to God and his will. That is what darkness represents in the Bible. It is also used for ignorance. When someone is ignorant of the things of God, the Bible says he lives in darkness. You can be spiritual, you can be religious, but you might, be, you might not have the knowledge of God, the right knowledge of God. The Bible says anyone that does not have the right knowledge of God lives in darkness because Jesus is the light, and Jesus' light is what brings life. So anyone that does not have the true knowledge of God, the Bible refers to them as living in the darkness. Ignorance of the word of God will make people to live out of the will of God. And if you are watching this right now on your favorite TV station, F Living, and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, this is an opportunity to come to Jesus. Come unto me, all of you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the source of life. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the savior of the world. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the resurrection and the, Jesus is the judge. He is the one that is going to judge both the dead and the living on the judgment day. So it's an opportunity for you to come to Jesus and give your life to Jesus, surrender your life to Jesus, so you can equally have the life of God. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse, six, verse 2, the Bible says the whole world lies in darkness. The, the entire nations of the earth, if you look at that scripture on the screen, it says darkness, it started with the word darkness. Darkness as black as night covers all nations. All nations in that content include our nation where we live now. All nations of the earth. All nations. What the Bible is trying to tell us is that the entire world lies in darkness. And we must understand that there is no part of the earth that is not covered with darkness. Darkness is, 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 is I'm going to put that, okay. Darkness is lack of the knowledge of God or refusal of God. And that's what the world is presenting to us right now. 
People have choose not to believe in God. People have choose not to follow God. People have chosen not to admit that God is the source of everything in their life. No one that Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, he said, he put it this way. He said, with the Lord authority, I have said this. Do not live like the people of the world. Another version said, don't live like the Gentiles. For they are hopelessly confused. Hopelessly confused. Look at that word, hopelessly confused. The reason they are hopelessly confused is because they have chosen not to celebrate God. They have chosen not to admit that God is God. They have placed human, human secularism ab to be above what God says. And as a result of that, the Bible says they are hopelessly confused. In verse 18, it says their minds are full of darkness. Their minds are full of darkness. So verse 17 says they are hopelessly confused. Verse 18 says their minds are full of darkness. Remember what darkness is. Darkness is the absence of God. Darkness is ignorance about good and evil. Darkness is somebody who is not living by the will and by the word of God. Darkness is anyone that actually is under the condemnation of God. Ignorance is darkness. So they are, the Bible says their mind is full of ignorance. Ignorance, they can be intellectual. They can be PhD holders. They can be scientists, but they do not have the knowledge of God. And the Bible says their mind is full of darkness. Now, if you continue in that scripture, it says, they wander far away, if I can have it on the screen again, they wander far away from the life of God. This is a choice that many people have made. They have choose to move away from the teaching of God, move away from the word of God, move away from the will of God. They have accepted secularism, things above the things of God. So it's important for us to see what the scripture is saying in the latter part of verse 18. It said, they have closed their mind. So number one, their mind is full of darkness. If you look at that scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, their mind is full of darkness. Number two, they have gone far away from God. And number three, they have closed their minds. These are choices that people make. They have closed their minds. And number four, are hardened their hearts against him. These are choices that people have made. Close their mind, harden their heart, far away from God, and their mind full of darkness. This is the description of Paul regarding the world in which we live today. And you and I know that in the world we live today, that we, you, can, you can testify and, and confirm this even within your heart, that the, the world is so soft, sophisticated, a lot of technology, science, and a lot of things, which is fantastic. But we understand that with all these science and sophistication, we have pushed God away from our homes. We have pushed God away from our schools. We have pushed God away from our, from our offices. We have pushed God away from our industries. There is nowhere people are talking or, or looking for God again. What people are looking for is religion. What people are looking for is, is uh, 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 other, other things apart from God, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I said something recently that with all the technologies and development and scientific findings, no one of them could solve the virus issue we have in the world today. With all these things, no one of them could foresee that this virus is coming, and as a result of that, let's stop it before it comes. With all the PhDs, with all the scientific findings, the Bible says the reason is because they are hopelessly confused because they are hopelessly confused. This confusion makes people to recognize things even when they are right in front of them. They will not recognize what God is saying, even if you present it in front of them. Whenever God moves, we will, they will deny God move. They will have to take the things of God into lab or, or uh, to go and use telescope or something to find out about God. I said this many times, if God stand in front of them right now and do all kinds of things to prove to them that he's God, they will still deny him. 
because their minds are full of darkness. They have wandered far away from God. They have closed their minds about the things of God. They have hardened their heart against God. So no matter what comes around them today, they will still deny God. They will still want to follow the things that bring perverse, perversion, the, the, the perversive knowledge instead of the knowledge that leads to God. Knowledge that the, the only thing, they know everything. As I've said many times, these scientists and, and PhD and, and intellectual people, uh, they know everything, but they fail to know the things that is most important, which is the knowledge of God. Just look at the technology of today. Each one of them is designed to lead us away from God. And this is why I said many times in the church, Use the technology as much as you want to do, but make sure that it leads you to know more about God. Their minds are closed. I call these futilities of mind. When people think that they are so smart and they know everything more than they, they, they and they have clueless about the revelation of Jesus Christ, that's futility of mind. That's futility of mind. And we see people today trying to create what they believe is God out of laboratory. They go to laboratory to create their own God. Can you imagine that? Can you find God? The Bible says that it's not man that can have the finding. Findings of God is deeper than the knowledge of any man. You come to God by faith. You believe God by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So people try to take God into the laboratory. They're using artificial intelligence to analyze God. It doesn't work that way. You will never find God that way. And, and that's what I call futility of mind. But we all know that one day, very soon, we are going to present ourselves before God and we are going to give account. Listen to me, either you believe it or not, the Bible says that God has appointed a day in, in, in Acts chapter 17, verse 31. God has appointed a day where he will judge all men. And he will judge all men by this one man who is called, who is called Jesus Christ. And this is why we are bringing the gospel of Jesus into the comfort of your home. We are, not, we are asking you to stay at home and we will tell you about God. We will tell you about Jesus. We will tell you about eternity. We will tell you about what God wants, what God desires, what God requires out of us. And, and you see, watching this now in your heart, you will agree with me that the world is getting worse. We cannot get, it can, listen, it's going to get worse than this. And this is why we're calling you to surrender your life to Jesus. We're calling you to obey the word of God. We're calling you to come to the rescue. Salvation is only in Jesus. Sa safety is only in Jesus. Take as much of vaccination as you want to take, and, I re and I'm not against vaccination. But with, without God protecting you, without God protecting you, and listen to what Jesus said. He said, I'm the light of the world. Listen to this. If I have that scripture again in, in John chapter 8, uh, he said, I am the light of the world. And listen to what he said. If any man follow me, he said, he will not walk in darkness. Darkness in that context, it has to do with oppression of the devil. Remember, I said darkness is evil. And, and evil comes from the enemy, comes from Satan. Sickness, disease, oppression in the night. You wake up in the night as if somebody is strangling you, as if you wake up, you know, all this kind of disease that is coming into the world comes, the source of them is darkness. But Jesus said, if you follow me, you won't walk in darkness. This is why we are calling you to surrender your life to Jesus, because Jesus declared that he is the light of the world. Look at what John the Baptist said in John chapter 1, verse 9. John said this, Jesus is the true light that gives every man that comes into this world light. That's what John said. John chapter 1 verse 9. Jesus is the true light which lightens every man that comes into this world. So if you need light in your life, you need Jesus. If you need illumination in your understanding, you need Jesus. If you want to understand what is going on in the world right now, you need Jesus. If you want to be able to explain properly and interpret the situation the world is facing right now, you need Jesus. John said Jesus is the true light. Light is revelation. Light is illumination. Light is knowledge. We say it in the world. Knowledge is power. If you know a thing, 
then you have dominion over that situation. As I close in this uh, program today, I want you to look at four things that light does in our life. Number one, light will dispel the powers of darkness. Light will dispel the power of darkness. In John chapter 1 verse 5, Jesus said, put, I am the light. He said, the light shines in darkness. Now, you and I will agree that when you go wake up in the middle of the night, you probably turn off your light. Or when you walk into anywhere, you turn off, the light is turned off. The, the place is dark. You don't need to pray or gesticulate or do anything. All you have to do is switch on, put on the switch and on your light, and the entire place will be light lit up. You don't need to do anything. When light comes, when light shines, darkness is dispelled. And this is what we are saying. He said, and darkness cannot extinguish light. It's the light that extinguish darkness. So if you want to have victory, you want the power of darkness not to be able to control you, you need the light. And Jesus is the light of the world. No amount of darkness can stop light from shining. If you have the light, you will have victory over sin. You will have victory over Satan. You will have victory over circumstances. All this oppression and, and things that you want to do that you don't do. You know, all this, all this habit, bad habit that you develop and you can't get rid of. All you need is the light of the world. And Jesus is the light of the world. The moment light comes, darkness will go. It has to go. It has to buy, bow. Number two. What does light do? Light delivers us from the power of darkness. Not only it dispels the power, it delivers us from the power. Some of you are under oppression. Some of you are under curses. Some of you, you see that, that your father has this particular disease, your, your brother has this particular disease, his father had that particular disease, and you are going through exactly the same thing. That means you are under the power of darkness. It is a generational thing. The sin, the, the evil, the, the sickness that happened to your grandfather is happening to your great-grandfather, is happening to your father, is happening to your... The same thing. You find that a mother had cancer. His grandmother had cancer. His son had cancer. And this is... You find that the arthritis is there. And then the great-father had arthritis. And then the mother had... That, you see that it's coming from generation. It could be a habit situation. You see the trace of that habit in your family... Is the power of darkness. Remember, Jesus is the light, and darkness is evil. Whatever is not good is evil. Whatever is not good is evil. And this is why I'm telling you again, Jesus is the solution. Jesus said, come unto me, all of you that are in darkness, and I will give you light. What he's saying is, come to me, whatever oppression you are going through, he said, and I will make sure you are delivered. But you have to surrender your life to Jesus. I'm not telling you to surrender your life to religion. Surrender your life to Jesus. I'm not telling you to surrender your life to the church. Surrender your life to Jesus. And you can do that in the comfort of your home. You don't have to stand before any man to confess your sin. You can confess your sin directly to Jesus, and he will forgive you. If anyone confess, First John chapter 1, verse 9, if any man sin, let him confess his sin, and is faithful and just to forgive all our sin. First John Chapter 1, verse 9. So this is very, very important. Where you are, where you are watching, either you are watching in your kitchen, in your bathroom, in your car, wherever you are watching, if you confess your sin, God is faithful. He is faithful and just to forgive you all your sins in the plural and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So this is, once again, why we're bringing Jesus to you. If you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, he said, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and he has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. No matter the darkness in your life, Jesus will set you free today. No matter the darkness in your life, Jesus will and can send you, set you off today. No matter what is holding you down, it may be bad habits, as I've said earlier on. It may be a curse in your family. It may be a generational thing, as I've said. It may be sickness 
in your body or in the body of your loved one. You've gone to the hospital. You, you, you've taken medication. Maybe it's hypertension. Maybe it's, it's um, depression. Maybe, maybe it's high blood pressure. Maybe you know, the doctors will tell you all kinds of things, and the doctors are fantastic. Without them, you know, we, 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 a lot of people could be miserable today. But if you bring that to Jesus, and you have faith in Jesus, and you will surrender to Jesus, he said, I am the light of the world, and I will deliver you from the kingdom of darkness. So come to Jesus today. Surrender your life to Jesus today and see what Jesus will do in your life. Number three, light not only uh, dispel the power of darkness, light not only destroy the power of darkness, but light also disseminates the, 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 the knowledge of God. It spreads. When you have light, you have knowledge. When you know a thing, abuse, you cannot abuse that thing. If somebody tells me, you know, where I'm standing now, uh, we are, we are to go to, to, go to uh, Gozo, we need to go to Shemshia, and then we take the ferry, and then we go to Gozo. And then somebody comes to me and says, no, 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 you need to go to Masaskala, pass Halfa, and then you're going to... You, because I know that that is a wrong direction, I will not follow that. So, not light... This mean hey, it, it spreads the knowledge of God. And when you have the knowledge of God, you will not be confused about anything. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, Paul tells us there that it, uh, let, there, let there be light in the darkness and has made light to shine out of our hearts. This means Christ is the distributor of the knowledge of God. That is the powerful statement. Christ is the distributor of the knowledge of God. Listen to me and watch my lips, my friend. There is no way you can know God apart from Christ Jesus. Jesus said nobody has ever seen God. And nobody has ever been with God apart from him. He is the only one that can show us God. And this is why we are calling upon you to know Jesus. Know Jesus and you will know God. Thomas said, Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus told him, Thomas, I've been with you all this long, and still you don't know that anyone that has seen me has seen the Father. So we are asking you to come to Jesus. The only knowledge you need about God is the knowledge of Jesus. And you can have the knowledge of Jesus if you have the knowledge of his word, the Holy Bible. You have it in your home, and if you don't have it, we can give you a free Bible. The Bible is the same. You know, it's not a matter of is that Catholic Bible or Pentecostal Bible or Protestant Bible. Read John chapter 3 in every Bible is the same. For God so loved the world, verse, 3, verse 16, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him will not perish. Verse 17 says, but if you choose not to believe on him, you are condemned already. So this is very vital. In John chapter, 4, verse 40, John chapter 6, verse 46, Jesus made this statement. I'm sorry, John chapter 1, verse 18. Jesus made this statement. He said, no one has ever seen God but him himself. And he said himself is God. And then he also said he has come to reveal God to us. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only truth. And there is no knowledge out there in the world that is superior to that, the knowledge of Jesus. Scientific knowledge... Um, the scientific journal, and they have all kinds of findings, but they have not found that Jesus is the Son of God. And I'm, and I'm telling you that you, you don't need to rely on those things to know God. Rely on them for other things, but when it comes to the knowledge of God, you need the knowledge of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are living in darkness. No matter what you achieve in your life, no matter the education background, no matter, no matter the uh, accomplishments, no matter the eloquence, no matter your state and your status in, in your community, in your nation, in, your, in the world, if you don't have the knowledge of Jesus, you, don't, you are living in darkness. And I pray and I hope that this teaching will bring you the understanding that you need to have to know Jesus. Finally, what does light do? Light designates us as the sun or as the light of the world. If you know Jesus, wherever you go, you become his ambassador. 
you become an ambassador. An ambassador of any nation represents the one who sent him. This world is not our own. Heaven is our home. And we are here on this part of the world to represent God, to represent the president of the kingdom. And we are the ambassador. We are the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he also told us, we are the light of the world. If you choose to follow him, you will, uh, um, you will make, he will make you the light of the world and you will never regret your choice in following Jesus Christ. Maybe you are watching this wherever you are. I don't know which channel, which platform you are using to watch this. Maybe you are watching it on YouTube or maybe you are watching it on your favorite TV station. Uh, my mission is to bring the good news into your house and I want to ask you, if you have not given your life to Jesus, that's the place to start from. Surrender your life to Jesus. Ask him to come into your life now. Confess your sin to him. Look at your life. Look at where you want to go. Look at the situation in the world. Listen, Jesus is coming soon. He's coming. He's coming. This world is not going to get better. No matter what the politicians tell us, they have to tell us that to win election. But I'm telling you, according to the word of God, this world is not going to get better. And Jesus is the only one that can save you from the calamity that is yet to come. If you want to give, know more about us, you can reach us on any of those numbers or on email or on Instagram um, or Facebook, Overcomers Chapel. Uh, you can ask us any question. If you have given your life to Jesus and you want to know more about God, we are willing to help you. Again, you can reach us on any of those platforms. Or my, my number directly, 79572874. I repeat, 79572874. That's my number, and I will do everything to assist you in the knowledge of God. If you have given your life to the Lord, we want to know you. We want to help you. We want to give you free Bible, English or Maltese. We want to give you materials that can help you to know more about Jesus. Let us hear from you. Until next time, I'm Pastor Jide. Bringing the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ directly into the comfort of your home.